In this lesson, we'll talk about the ways that you can buy on credit. So there's two main types of loans that we can encounter in today's world. First, you've got an installment loan. Installment loans basically are the idea that you pick a certain amount of money that you want to borrow, and you pay back a fixed number of payments at a fixed payment itself. Another form of an installment loan is what we call an interest-only loan, which means that you pay a little bit of money per month just to keep the loan, but then at the end of the period, you must pay the entire loan suddenly in full. These are not always the best type of loans to get yourself into. Another type of loan is what we call revolving credit. Often this concept is the same idea as a credit card. With revolving credit, what you have is a certain amount of money that you're allowed to borrow, and you can borrow it immediately at any time you swipe that credit card. And you have a maximum amount that you are allowed to borrow overall. The way that payments work for these is that payments are higher if you owe more money. So you don't have a fixed payment, it just depends on how much money you owe and how much you have borrowed up to your maximum at that time. A third type that we sometimes talk about, even though it is also a type of installment loan, is an add-on interest loan. Add-on interest is designed a little bit differently in that add-on interest comes from simple interest. You compute the simple interest at the end of the term, and then just take the total that you would have plus interest and divide by the number of payments that you're going to be making. So let's take a look at a few examples of installment loans. And we'll be assuming that all payments are paid monthly this time. So let's start off with a computer. You want to purchase a computer that costs $1,499, and you want to pay with it for three years. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an add-on interest calculation with an interest rate of 12%. And we want to find out how much we have to pay each month to pay off this computer. So first off, 12% interest and add-on interest uses just the simple interest formula. So from the previous lesson, we have this formula that tells us how much money we now owe after the interest is added on. So let's compute this. P is the original $1,499. R is 0.12 because we're talking about 12% interest. And T is three years. So with that said, all we need to do is compute this. I get that the repayment amount after the simple interest is applied is $2,038.64. That's how much we have to pay back. So now our question is, what is the monthly payment? The monthly payment will simply be $2,038.64 divided by the total number of payments. Now let's be careful here, we're not going to divide by 3, we're actually going to divide by the number of months in 3 years. This is 36 months. 36 months is 3 times 12 because there's 12 months in a year. So when we do this, we get $169.89 each month that you would have to pay back to pay back this computer. And I would just like to point one thing out. This is how much you're really paying for the computer whereas the cost of the computer was $1,499. So to get the computer a little bit earlier than maybe you could pay for it, you have to pay over $500 extra for the computer. Not necessarily worth it. One thing in the last slide that was sort of hidden is something called the APR. The APR gives us a more true comparison for how much money we're actually paying and the interest that we're actually paying on various types of loans. The APR, also known as the annual percentage rate, is the amount of simple interest that you would really be considering if you consider it on a yearly basis. So it actually turns out that the APR is generally different from a quoted interest rate. However, if you're only going to make one payment at the end, then the APR is generally the same thing. One little note here is that the APR for a mortgage or other car loan sometimes is a little bit different than the APR we're going to be talking about in this lesson. Sometimes they include extra fees such as taxes, insurance, different things that you have to pay with the mortgage, and they base the APR on that rather than the actual interest that you're paying for the loan itself. Let's see if we can consider an APR for a simple situation here. So let's suppose we have $2,000 that is borrowed at 10% add-on interest for two years. And this is kind of similar to the problem we did with the computer just a moment ago. And what we're going to do is we're going to pay this amount back in two payments. So this picture illustrates what's really going on. You have to pay back $2,000, and if you were to compute the interest, the interest would be 
that would be 2,000 times the 10% times 2. So if we're doing add-on interest, we're going to take the 2,400 that we would owe, divided by the two payments, and we see that we're going to be making $1,200 per payment. So the first payment is considering your $1,200 here. You owe 2,000, and you're paying $200 interest on that 2,000. So then you make your $1,200 payment, and now the balance is down to 1,000, because you paid 200 and 1,000, but then you're still paying another $200 on this 1,000 because we're using the simple interest from the original. This actually does change the numbers a little bit more than we might realize. If you look at this, after you've paid that $1,000, you're still having to pay $200 interest on the original principal rather than the new principal. They're getting you there. So even though you're paying $200 in the second year, which is fair considering the original loan, if you think about it from the perspective of $1,000, you're really paying 20% interest in that second loan. And this is where the APR comes in. So the APR is coming up with the rate that if we consider the rate in its real sense, we can look at what we're really paying as a percent each year. It's sort of a weighted average between these two rates here. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend that there's a rate being used on a yearly basis. So in the first year, we've got $2,000 times that rate times one year, and that's going to be the interest you pay in the first year. And then we've got the 1,000 times the same rate times one year for the interest paid in the second year. And we're going to set that equal to the interest that we had before. The 2,000 times 0.1 times 2 that I mentioned here was the $400. So if we solve for R, this will tell us how much we're actually paying percentage-wise each year. So let's solve this equation. If I simplify this, this just becomes 3,000 R. And again, the 2,000 times 0.1 times 2 is 400. So if we divide by 3,000, we get that R equals 0 0.13 and so on. It actually repeats. So your APR, if you convert that to a percent, is 13.33%. Now I thought we were paying 10%, but it's sort of hidden into the fact that it's simple add-on interest and we're actually paying a little bit more than 10% per year. So this is a task that gets a little bit complicated. We only did it for two payments and it would get significantly harder if we were looking at it for more than two payments. Whatever the case, we're in luck because there was a law passed in 1969 called the Truth in Lending Act that requires that the APR be published on all loans. So we don't have to calculate the APR ourselves. It's always given to us so we can use it to make a judgment on what is the best loan for us. Let's look at another example. We've got a payday loan company that charges $1 per day for every $200 that they finance in their payday loan. So for example, let's say we have $350 that you bring in for a payday loan and you're going to finance it for four days. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to charge you this fee here of $1 per day times the amount of $200 financed. So you can just take your $350 divided by $200 to see how many dollars you're going to pay per day and then multiply that by the four days. And we get $7 is the fee that has to be paid. Now that doesn't seem that bad. We pay $7 and they give us a pretty good loan. But this isn't as honest as it might seem. Let's find out what the APR is. So we've got $1 per day for every $200 financed. So let's use our formula. I equals PRT. $1 interest is paid on every $200. We're going to find out what that rate is. And this is done every day. So we need to be a little bit careful and think of one day as one three hundred sixty-fifth of a year. Now let's solve this thing. So one equals two hundred divided by three sixty-five times r. And let me just multiply by the reciprocal here. Three sixty-five over two hundred on both sides of this equation. I get r is equal to three sixty-five over two hundred and if I convert that, I get 1.825. That doesn't sound bad at all, but if you stop and think about it, you're going to realize something. 
that is actually not a percent. That's a decimal. As a percent, this is 182.5% interest rate. Whoa! 182.5%. If we really wanted to make some money, perhaps owning a payday loan company is a good way to do it. But to use one of these? It might seem like you're not paying very much, but boy are you losing money.